So in this tutorial, we'll be building this uh, popsicle here. And uh, we're going to start in Maya and build a piece of geometry. So we're going to have one piece of geometry for ice cream and then just uh, this little ice cream stick in here. And then we're going to move into substance and we're going to uh, create this layer of chocolate and the nuts and this uh, cracked hole here with uh, the ice cream and the, the caramel. So let's uh, get into uh, Maya over here. So this is the geometry. We're not going to cover how to make this geometry because it's uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, essentially just simple shape like this and the UVs are s cylindrically mapped and fits in between the 0 to 1 uh, UV space. Obviously the UVs will be pinched up here but we're not going to worry too much about that. Also pinch down here and the seams on the back. Just make sure that uh, UVs line up across the seam. But actually for a render it doesn't really matter because we're rendering it uh, just from one side. So in Maya we just need a one material on the ice cream part itself and one material on this and just export select this and export as a FBX and here we are in Substance Designer we're gonna start by just tweaking the interface here so we're gonna close this library and pull this one off I'm gonna start a new substance file using my setup file here and then we're gonna drag this one off and put here and put this one under there. I'm just gonna drag the Explorer back here because we're gonna save this and tutorial popsicle save there and then we're going to drag and drop our popsicle mesh in here, like so. And then we can right click in uh, our 3D view in here. We'll copy this and we'll just set the color. View in 3D view and we'll pick the ice cream material. So and now we're good to go. So the first thing we'll do here inside Substance is we can rename this. So we can call this Popsicle. And then we can create a couple of more graphs. We'll do empty here and we call this an underscore nuts. I keep underscores so I know which ones are subcomponents typically. And then we will do another one empty as well. And we call this one ice cream. You can save that. So let's start with, uh, we want to create one, one little nut here that we're going to duplicate across the surface. So this will be a little subgraph and we'll create a couple of permutations of it. So we're going to start here with a, polygon. Let's give us a bit more space here. And reduce the sides maybe. And do a warp and some purlin noise. can blend that with a gradient, set it to min darken. This is gradient axial. Let's 
something like that. We can do a histogram scan. And we can do a slow blur on here. Just trying to randomize the shape. Perlin noise. We'll do another one with low perlin noise, but we don't want the same as this, so we get a different seed on this. Let's do another one of these. Uh, we can do a histogram scan. Run this through a non-uniform blur. Soften up the edges. Do it like this. Histogram range here, maybe. Yeah, something like this. And we'll put an output here. So now, when we grab this node inside, if we move back to our popsicle here. We drag our nuts node in here. And now we can clone out a few of these. We can do three different ones. Let me just random seed a few. Pick a higher number, you can slide between way more versions. Yeah, that's four pretty decent ones we can use. So here back in designer, we're gonna add a tile sampler. And we're gonna set this one to pattern input and we have four different ones. We're gonna just hook them up to these patterns. Like so. We could put uh, auto levels in here as well to have a better range. Do it for all of these. We could do it inside the subgraph, but now I already did it in here. Uh, here we can hit D to just dock these so the graph is a little bit cleaner. Uh, we can add a frame around this. So we add a frame. So we can f find that easily later. Now let's start tweaking this. So we can add the symmetry random. Symmetry random is just making sure like there's a mirrored version of, of this shape, not just a rotation. And we'll do some size random on this. And 
maybe we do a little more of this. So we'll do, oops, let's do 20 by 18, something like that. A little bit more scale and more, more random. Let's go down to position random. Set this one to point three, maybe a bit less. Or two. Yeah, we really don't want stuff to touch too much in here. We'll do offset 0 0.5. Let's do maximum rotate random as well, so they all um, look more uh, dynamic. Do a little bit of mask random. Maybe not actually. Let's uh, set down the scale a bit more. And we can actually adjust the scale in some of these by putting a transform in here so we get some of these nuts to always be a little bit smaller. And then we'll change the color random so they all have different uh, Different heights. So let's let's start with this. We can hook it up here. So we see like on our actual mesh. Uh, it looks pretty good. We don't have displacement and tessellation on this guy yet because my range is wrong. So let's just uh, go with the flow here and uh, add some things before we correct that. So we can add one of these black and white spots. And we run this through a high pass to yeah, even out the, the large scale noise. And this one we run through at levels. I get some dim things here. So I'm going to run this through a slow blur grayscale. Just a min. You can go back and adjust the range of this. And this one will lower the scale of this. It's getting a bit more uh, nut type texture on these. And now they all pretty much look uh, unique. Instead of putting this type of detail inside these, then we'll need way more. Now we just, uh, we can get away with a few of these. Now we're gonna put a blend node in here and we're gonna put this one in the top. We're gonna do a blur. I want the, them to look a bit softer and then we can set this to uh, yeah maybe something like that just creates like a bump around where they sit 
if we go back to our render here, you see like where these nuts sit, there's a bump up. And we're going to add a few more of those. So we'll add another blur node here. We'll grab this one. Set this one to something even higher. Throw this one through a histogram range. So we're working in at the middle range. Now here we're, we're all the way at black. Organize a bit. And we can use a directional blur as well, and we'll use it on uh, this guy over here. Something lower to get the sort of more illusion of uh, the chocolate where the nuts are sticking is kind of like pouring down a bit. And we'll blend that on here and we'll just add, we'll set that to maybe 0.25. And now we're gonna combine these two together. We're gonna use the height blend node I'm going to set this one as the background or bottom. And this one is the top. And if we modify this top value here, that I'm going to bring out more of the nuts. And we can make this maximum sharpness here. And now we can enable our uh, displacement and tessellation on this ice cream material. So we make sure we have tessellation on here. It's on. Then we just go edit. Let's set this one to 20 and then try to dial in a scale that looks reasonable. That doesn't look all that bad. This will resolve later. We can try to pick a bit more uh, chocolatey color. And then make it a bit more shiny. And our AO is really extreme. That was pretty good. If we want this drip effect to be even stronger, we can try to run it through a directional warp and set it to come from above like this. That way we get most of the effect on the bottom. Yeah, I think that's good. Uh, to integrate these nuts a bit better in the chocolate, now it just looks like it's sticking out too much. We can grab this mask, which is, uh, you know, it's blending this guy and this guy together. So we get this mask, how they intersect. So we can run an edge detect on this and set it reduce this guy and set this guy down to maybe 0.5 or something. Yeah, no difference. We can invert this. And this guy will run through a blur. Do the high quality one. So 
something like that and we use a non-uniform blur here that way we can blur just around where they uh, connect to the main shape That was pretty good. And we can always go back and change like how many nuts and stuff we have on here. And how sort of soft they appear. That's all right. So let's do something about this pinching here. So we're going to use uh, just our non-uniform blur again. And let's add a gradient here. Let's add uh, this gradient linear two. We can invert this. Crank up our samples here. So obviously that's doing too much for us, so we can dial it in with the levels. That looks pretty good. And if, if this mask gets too sharp, we can, you know, we can just blur it a bit more. I feel like that looks nice. You can't really tell that this is a tiling texture on this. We have some little issue here. I think it's just a matter of dialing this, these values in, so we're not going to worry about that right now. So let's work on the little, let's see here this little cracked hole here. So we will start with uh, cells four, set this one to image input. Uh, we can lower this scale of that. Add a shape node. Set it to disk, scale it down a tiny bit. And this one will say no tiling. So we can hook this one up to our base color so we can just place it where it makes sense. I can actually blur this one a bit. That's pretty good, and we can run this through a histogram scan. I 
Ideally, we want to kill some of these floaters here. That looks pretty good. So we can add a frame around this and call this uh, hole. Shove this one in here. Let's see here. Grab this mask map input. So what we want to do here is we want to remove these nuts where we have this hole here. So we can say invert. So that's pretty good. I want to reset this range here again. Let's do a range. Because <clears throat> what I want to do here is to uh, is to bevel this edge a bit. So we can do a slope blur first just to break up the perfect edge. We can use this clouds two. We resample this to uh, 512. Oops. So what I want to do, I want to do samples up max. I'm going to set this to min. We can do a transform here that we scale up a bunch. It doesn't matter here that we actually break our tiling because this hole is not or this little mask here is not tiling anyways. We'll bevel this. Let's try that. A little bit of smoothing on this. And then we'll do a uh, Let's do a blend down here. I'll do a subtract. And we can hook this one up again. We can adjust our scale here a bit again. Because with this histogram scan here, we compress the range. So now we need a little bit more height back. We're going to leave it this open. Uh, I think for a little more detail here, we're going to add another slope blur. And now we can use this. Set this to min again. Set it to max actually. Let's see if we if we blur this. pretty good. 
let's see if we do in invert grayscale here and see if we do a and darken, does that look better? Let's see if it looks better if I just round this off a bit more, soften it. I think that looks good. We can just put some temporary colors in here before we actually start working on them. Let's grab that color for the nuts part right now. Reuse this mask. It's not our final color, but it just helps us separate the stuff we're working on. So next we'll work on um, the ice cream that will go into this hole that we created here. So in this section we'll work on uh, our little ice cream subgraph. I pulled my explorer window off to the side so we can see everything. So we're just going to open our ice cream subgraph here. We'll add one output. So looking at the texture here, there's like directionality and some cracking and it's kind of soft. So let's start by using this crystal here. Zoom in more so you guys can see better. I can run this through like an edge detect node. Yeah, something like that. And then do a transform and we'll run it this way. And then we'll run this through uh, make a tile photo version. Let's tweak some of these parameters. That's pretty good. Let's clone this once again. I'll scale it up a bit more here. We can offset it just to get a different look from the other one. Something like that. Let's drop in this base material node here. We'll use that one. 
uh, to preview uh, sort of what we're doing here. Point one. Let's just hook it up to this. And we say view this one in 3D view. Now we're going to run this through the also a bevel. Let's dial in so we don't have these pitch black corners there. Something like that. We can blend these two together. Min darken. Let's put a pearl of noise in here as a mask. Lower the scale of this. I can run this through a histogram scan just to To randomize a bit more how they're blended. See this? Now let's crank up the normal intensity on this preview here. Blend this with some cells. We can use cells one this time. Some disorder there. We can use uh, subtract. Just to break up like the Like the perfect sort of flatness of this. So we can also hook this one up like this. And we'll add another blend node. We can actually add a slope blur on this just to uh, mess up this shape a bit more. We'll add a cloud. Two all the way up to max. Set this one to min. We can use my custom node here. You can find on my Gumroad. It's for free. It's called uh, Death to Directional Warp. Set this to 36 or something like that. Let's eyeball it in actually. And we can change the start direction. I feel like we're getting a bit closer to that look there. I can try different clouds. Try clouds one. That starts looking like that a bit. Let's use my low passing node, which you also can find in my gum road, and also a free node. This node essentially just blurs in a few steps. And you can say how many blur steps you want. 
Well, let's just use maximum on this and then you can now you can fade out the effect here. Let's add a dirt one, which is this just like a fine grain pattern of specks. It's like aiming to recreate some of these like very small uh, bumps on here. We can set this one to subtract. Add another one and we change the scale on this and the disorder and the seed. I thought that looks pretty good. We'll save this and we jump back to our uh, popsicle here. And we'll grab this ice cream and we'll drag and drop it in here. Oops. Double click this. Okay, that's here. We'll move this out of the way again. We can maximize. So now we're just going to blend I'm going to use the height, height blend node to blend in our ice cream on here. Put that on the bottom and we'll do view outputs in 3D view ice cream material. And now there's ice cream everywhere. So we need to just up this until the ice cream is only inside that hole there. I think what we can do here is do a histogram range just to flatten out the appearance of this. And then for air, we also do that. And here we can play around with like how thick is our uh, chocolate coating sort of. And now we already have a mask for uh, how these two intersect. So we can set a blend up here. We move this one into the top and we'll add a new one here. For the ice cream. So we're almost done with our shape here. The only thing we have left is to uh, to add this caramel over here. We'll do that in the next step. 
So final step here on the shape is to recreate this caramel over here. So back in substance. We want to add it to uh, where our ice cream comes in over here. So let us first start with, uh, we need to know that essentially can draw a couple of lines here. So there's this node called stripes. Not a node I use very much, but it happens to do some of this stuff pretty well. something like that and if we just if we just blend this on in the dumbest possible way here we could just uh, adjust how they should show up on our 3d model here so I want them to show up something like this we can do we can squeeze them together and stretch them breaking the tiling of this doesn't matter either so that's pretty good uh what we'll do next is blend the this mask on top of it and we'll use a multiply So now we have this, and this one will run a histogram scan. Something like that. Just wanted to, you know, end up inside where this hole is here. And we'll do a uh, edge detect on this guy. Whoops. Undo that. Edge detect. We'll flip the order of this. Remove this. Set it down to sort of 1.5 somewhere. Let's keep clean numbers 1.5. And then we'll blur this. And then we can run this result through a histogram scan. We just want to make it look like one of those little smears that are like Big on it, like a drip, drip pattern on each end. And we'll make it full solid like this. Let's move these guys out of the way. All the way back here. This guy. And tug these over here. run this through a non-uniform blur just to get a shape of it uh, up our samples see if we can get a nicer shape that's pretty good, but it's on the way too strong, obviously. So we'll change this here. This is our ice cream here. We're going to add this one onto there.
fix that issue. And now our ice cream texture or structure is coming through our caramel, so we don't want that either. So we'll just use a non-uniform blur again. And we'll use this histogram here. something like that and we can dial in the height of our caramel here that looks pretty good and we can select this ice cream color here and blend let's hijack this make this a little more uh, caramelly if that's a word and we'll use this mask. So one, here we're masking between nuts and chocolate, and here we're masking between uh, caramel and ice cream. So that's it for our uh, shape. looks pretty good but we now need to focus a bit on our color and we'll do that in the next video so let's work on the colors here uh, we're gonna start with the uh, set a gradient map uh, we moved our colors off to the side Get them a bit further off. We want to grab our height here. And we'll hook that up to our color like so. But before we do that here, actually let's minimize our window and bring up some kind of reference here. You can start by grabbing these colors for this caramel here. It looks a little bit too red to me. We can Grab a dark color for the ice cream as well. Make it a little bit darker here. Uh, back to this. So let's grab some soft colors here for our chocolate. This one has a lot of baked in lighting, so we need to be uh, a bit selective here where we pick. We can try down here. Select these two. Something kind of soft. We can hook this one up straight like that. We don't need this guy anymore. But we're going to do another one of these. 
with land between. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this input here and put a slope blur. So we're going to want to get this kind of sharp, sharp look, but it's like semi covered in uh, chocolate at times. Let's reuse this clouds too. So we can click here, single click, and then you can move with uh, holding the wheel and move where you need to go. Okay, we're a bit cut off here. We can put this to min as well. Something like that. And we can make this one either by manipulating these, we can make this one sharper. And we'll blend between those two. Do auto levels here. Uh, maybe not. Let's see if we do a high pass here, if we can just catch more of the more of the nuts themselves. I feel like that looks pretty good. We're getting too much of this hot white here. Let's dial it back a bit. I feel like that's pretty good. Go down here to our normal. Run out a curvature smooth from that. From this one, we're just going to blend on top of this. That looks pretty cool. We can clamp this range here so we don't go all the way to black. Still not happy with this caramel color. I wanted a little more yellowish for some reason. And for our ice cream, we can sample directly from our ice cream input here. We can actually do a high pass on that.
think we only need a couple of colors in here. So it's good like that. Now what we can add here to the vanilla as well, if we do a blend, do a uniform color, set it to black, we can add some uh, like vanilla specks in here. And do a high pass, grayscale is set it down a bit more. And now we have a few of those. And here we can just fade them out so they're not so strong. Move these guys down a bit. We're just going to do a little bit of quick roughness on here. So we'll add a few blend notes here. Oh no, we have our Nuts mask here. A little mask between those two. And then we also have our ice cream mask. We can call these guys again. Put here, and then we'll grab the this mask, the caramel here. So this is the caramel, the white, so this is the caramel value. We can add a comment here and call this. And we can add a comment on this guy and say ice cream. Now we can sort of dial in those two. I think this one should be the shinier one. See, we need to flip the order of these two. You can select both of these lines and hit X to flip them. And while we're doing this, uh, while we're tweaking some of the roughness, we can set this to be black here, so we only, only really see these values here. I think the ice cream itself should be pretty rough. Caramel, really shiny. We can compare to our uh, ice cream here. So I think the ice cream part itself should be yeah, somewhere around here. And the nuts may be a bit less. I think that feels pretty good. We can add a little dirt. generator here. Uh, we throw this one in there. Let's see where's our 
curvature, put that in here. Clone this AO because I don't want to mess with the AO of our main graph. And we can up our grunge, dial it down. And then we can put this on here. And just add this. Just a little bit of variation on the surface. I think that looks pretty good. Maximize here. We can go back and dial in some of our values here for our chocolate if we want a bit more shiny. We can go in here with the hue saturation modifier to maybe make it a little more saturated. Brown to have it with us. That's it.